Hello everyone, it me, Australia, and today I- Hello? Hey, it's GameStop. We've got physical games and Funko Pops. Sorry, I prefer my virginity via what? online downloads. Goodbye. No, 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 no! Alright, let's see what I can play. <laughs> Digital games, one of humanity's best achievements since the invention of the telephone. Please buy a Funko Pop! When it comes to video games, I tend to shout to the world that I'm a true gamer with a physical game in my hands. And today, I'm gonna be talking about digital games. So how do we get here? Well, it all starts in the 80s, baby. <laughs> the Atari 2600, never mind, is probably the first example of a video game console that really took off. So instead of having to go to the arcade, now I can have a watered down yet still semi enjoyable experience in my own home. Yeah! And with this came cartridges, a method of storing games on a physical drive that when plugged into the console, load up the exact game you want. This was used throughout the entirety of the 80s, coincidentally right when the video game crash happened. It's pretty neat technology, I mean I even have my uh, divorce papers in this cartridge. You know I never really understood how cartridges worked, like how does this thing tell me that it's Super Mario Brothers? It's just a piece of plastic. But after a couple years of using cartridges on literally everything, somebody new came to town. Video games could now be stored on discs. Yep, it's definitely thinner. These were cool when they came out. I mean, I wasn't alive when they first came out. Unfortunately, I was born after Princess Di lived up to her name, so I don't fully understand the hype, but these were still pretty cool. So now, not only were these games stored on something that was thinner, but you could hold so much more data on these things. It was incredible. It's also a circle. Now you can see the transition from cartridges to discs happening right smack dab in the middle of the 90s. God damn it. You can see that Nintendo was being Nintendo and refusing to use discs all the way up until the release of the GameCube right before my conception. But the lack of a disc drive on the N64 allows us to just see how much the market reacted to the adoption of discs as opposed to cartridges. Because N64 games were on cartridges, they frequently looked worse than other consoles with the same games because they could only store so much data. And because of that, you couldn't even have a good image. Everything looked compressed and watered down. It just looked ugly. You can see this as Nintendo sales were dropping pretty heavily around this time and sales were minuscule compared to the dominance of the PlayStation. One. Overall, it wasn't looking good for cartridges. They were a downgrade in pretty much all areas you can think of. Um, I don't think so. They actually load faster. Shut up! Overall, many people had already accepted the fate of cartridges by this time. You know, you had the Xbox, the PlayStation, the Dreamcast, all adopting discs around this time. But at the end of the day, when Nintendo joins in, you know it's over. And things were going pretty smooth for discs until something happened. The internet was just starting to take off in the late 90s and early 2000s. I'm not talking about the actual birth of the internet, but the time when it became more of a normal thing to say you had the internet, you know, and you wouldn't get beaten up anymore for saying the word email. It was starting to trickle into video games, slowly but surely. The Xbox featured an Ethernet port and the ability to connect to Xbox Live, one of the first major forays into online gaming. This subsequently led to the ability to break into what the console can do, apart from just be the thing you put the games in. Now it's the mid-2000s, and the Xbox 360, the PS3, and the Wii are about to come out. What do they have? God, this is the worst restaurant menu. Yes, that's right. They finally added a big menu that wasn't just a goddamn calendar. And with this came a store. This was the beginning of the end. Video games were starting to all get the ability to play online multiplayer with your friends. With your friends! That's right, now you can comfortably sit at home and talk to your friends while playing all of your favorite video games together and still look like a dunce! But the biggest thing that led to the creation of digital video game stores was an entire console menu, which used to be a decorated DOS menu up until this point. It's clear that during this era, it became a new thing to create a comfortable menu for users to find the charm and all the cool features of your console and to also find a lack of sexual partners. The Wii had by far the most innovative with a bunch of little channels that you could click on and hear Mario yell. <laughs> this was the best way of getting around the Wii with the stick we were given, and it shows. Nintendo even wanted the Wii to be this all-in-one deal where you can turn it on and not only get Mario, but you can get the news, the weather, and even politics. You can just tell that so much love went into making the Wii console menu. Everything feels so well made and clean, all fitting into the theme of the console while keeping it so super minimal and easy to understand. Now looking at the PS3, it's clear that they really wanted this to be an all-in-one machine. Like yeah, I can play Little Big Planet and then browse my pictures, I bet you're jealous. Honestly, this was a bit overkill, I always thought the PS3 menu just had too much going on. But overall, I still do like how the menu was set up, it was really satisfying to hear the clicks for every menu change and just mm. The Xbox 360, I never really had, so I don't know how this worked, I guess? I don't know, it felt like Windows 8, but worse. Not only 
only that, but it feels like Microsoft just went through lots of insecurity with this since they changed the layout like 10 times. I don't know, I feel like the earlier designs aged worse aesthetically, but generally they looked more functional, which is pretty much what you want for ease of use and keeping people happy. But then, it happened. Digital game installs were finally becoming a thing, and now all these console makers were creating their own stores for you to shop in instead of having to go to the local Target and display your virginity. No freaking way, gamers. I can play Mario again? This is the beginning of the online download era. We had at least four gigabytes and that was enough. The Wii definitely took advantage of the downloadable game idea by offering a massive library of classic video games to download while also allowing for Wii games to be downloaded. It was a huge step and preserved many of the classics on an easy, versatile format. Like yeah, I know holding the Wii controller on its side is the greatest sin you can commit, but at least it worked for these old school NES games. Not only did these take up so little space on the system, but it's a way for you to keep playing the classic games you love without booting up your grandpa's antique. The Wii did this perfectly and allowed you to really see everything you could get in one convenient, simple place. Not only that, but it helped push indie games a massive amount. Now, there were a few shovelware games. A few. But generally, the Wii did the best. I mean, it had everything. Big games, small games, it had it all. Now, what about the Xbox 360? I have no experience with this one. Yeah, sorry, you're just gonna take my word for it as a grain of salt. I never got to use this console, and if I did, it was at a friend's house and I just never went to the store. But I don't know, I just remember the Xbox being a little too pro indie and just letting anyone produce a game for the platform, which is fine. I mean, do whatever you want, but man, this just looks so unappealing. Couple that with the fact that it was also just a movie and TV show store and this just looks weird. This kind of translates into the modern era of the Xbox, but we'll touch on that later. Now here we go, the PS3, the slowest store in the market. But generally from what I remember, this was an awesome store. Just moving around at all, you could see all the big games, smaller games, unique games, and the complete lack of backwards compatibility. It's had a similar issue with the Xbox 360, showing many more movies and TV shows that honestly just made it feel more like a computer than anything else. Overall, this was a good start into the era of downloading games but it gets worse. As the stores progressed over time, one thing was very clear. Games were getting bigger. And throughout the lifespan of this first generation, things were manageable. They were they were still a little bit manageable going into the next gen, but God, it just went into space. As somebody who had to wait over 24 hours to download an eight gigabyte file in 2015, you can imagine that digital games becoming a 50-50 mix alongside physical games was scary. And here we go at the next gen, the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4, and the Wii U. You know, I want to watch a movie. Let me boot up my Xbox. TV, TV, watch TV, 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 Yeah, some companies took it a little too far. But first, let's start with the Wii U, because this felt really cool. I like how Nintendo not only continued with Virtual Console and made it feel like a portal to touch on older games, but it felt much more like fleshed out than what Nintendo wanted to do with the Wii Shop. Because let's just be honest, the theme for the Wii, it was white. But this felt fun. Browsing through the store, I just, I felt like I was a kid again, and I just want to find a new Mario to play. That being said, this did run on a graveyard, but hey, they put the effort in, and it looks fun. Now, how about the PS4? Well, I do think this has a solid layout, uh, shows you all the games you needed to get, all the games you should consider, and the games you should not. Not only that, but the PS4 supported themes on the main menu, and this became a huge thing on the store where you could just buy themes. I severely missed this, and I really wish they would bring it back for the PS5, but nope. Hope you like the visual representation of Ed Sheeran's music. Generally though, the PS4 store was mostly unchanged from the PS3. Except for the number. And now we can touch on the Xbox One. Yeah, when this was announced, everyone was just like, huh? Well, Microsoft got way too cocky here and made the Xbox One into the Xbox comma one game in at least 80 movies on launch. Around this time, Microsoft was really pushing this to be the middleman between a cable box and a game console. Yeah, I'm okay with some TV and some movies and especially disc support, but man, they went too far and it shows. This is also when the Xbox was at its ugliest, just in general, so you can imagine the store wasn't much better. Now after this, as we progress farther into the 2010s, you can start to see that digital games were becoming more and more the norm, and bandwidth limits just never stopped staying the same. Because of this, there are a few issues, namely the size of games. I don't know if it's just me, but anything past 50 gigabytes, uh... I just can't do it anymore. It's such a hassle seeing a game you're interested in, giving them your money, and then being handed 
a restaurant beeper. Now my internet has gone better, but that doesn't make it fun to download still. Yeah, console storage limits were getting bigger, until they weren't. And now we have games that literally take up a quarter of an entire console storage and they expect me to have a library of games? With this size limit, I can have a small pile. At best! Like, okay, if internet speeds went up to match the size of games, yeah, sure, whatever. But then making me buy a whole $400 virgin stick just to play my games is a little bit goofy. I think most people would actually be just fine if consoles were at minimum like two terabytes to start because games keep getting bigger and my blood vessels are about to burst. On top of all of this, I think we're starting to see the beginning of the end for physical games. Now I know Nintendo will never stop doing physical games, so I'm not too worried for at least another 10 years. But seeing Xbox create the Xbox One S all digital, otherwise known as Xbox SAD, also seeing the Xbox Series S and the PS5 Digital Edition just completely ditch the disk drive, it just makes me sad. These used to be so fun, and the lack of shrink wrap in our landfills will never recover. Personally, I still prefer my Nintendo Switch games physically. I just love looking at Zelda. But as far as the Xbox goes, I'm completely done with physical games there. Not only has Xbox Game Pass done the whole digital game thing correctly for once, but it just feels so odd to hold a new Xbox game. Maybe it's because the disc is on the left side? Alright, let's add that to my list of federal crimes. And the PS5, I have a couple physical games, but I couldn't be bothered to play these. Overall, it feels like physical games not only lost their charm, but their status within the gaming industry. It feels like buying a physical copy is some sort of special occasion now, or just a means of preserving the game for long-term use if you're a nerd like me. All of this to say, What's the future like? Part of me thinks that physical games are always going to be a thing, but they're going to be kept out of necessity and just put like the DVD section at Target. This is sad. But we honestly could be at the very end of the physical game's lifespan. Like the next consoles might not even have a disk drive. They'll be gone. It's a scary future, but thankfully there are people like me who still prefer the physical touch of video games instead of just pressing a couple buttons and seeing my bank account completely overdraft. One last thing. <gasps> Hello? Hey, are Funko Pops? They're digital. So are you gonna buy it? No.